All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about anatomy art cheats. I promise you that this is gonna blow your mind, okay? So our first tip. Okay, so if you're having trouble with the growing arms, here is an easier way. So the first thing you're gonna do is to draw hands, just straight up hands, no arms, just vibes. This is gonna allow you to make arm poses that don't look stiff. Also, this is gonna give you more freedom to experiment with the posing. Once you've drawn the hands, it's gonna be easier for you to visualize how the arms are gonna look. Simply draw a circle for the shoulder and another circle for the elbow. The next tip, if you're having trouble drawing faces in different angles and you just can't find the perfect reference on Pinterest, then allow me to introduce to you this website. So basically what we have here is a 3D face. You can rotate the head however you want and then once you've chosen your head, it's gonna show you real life pictures of that same angle. What's more is that you can choose the emotions. For example, if you want this guy to be happy, there are a bunch of references for that. You can also choose how old your reference looks and there's more including the gender, age range, and a bunch of other accessories. It's sad that there isn't an option for bald people though. But also, it gets better because there's this other site that does exactly that, except that it's for animals. This is for all my furry homeboys out there. So you have this weird animal bone structure right here, and it basically works like the other site, except you can choose among so many of these species. It even has a frog. Look at that. I'll put all the links in the description, but first, keep watching or else. Now, for our third tip, use the magic triangle. So here's the thing. When we're drawing poses, a lot of people make the mistake of not putting enough pizzazz to their drawings, which makes their art boring and stiff. What I mean is that the character is just standing there doing nothing, just staring at the void. So a tip to avoid making your art look stiff is to add triangles. Try to imagine that your character's whole body is just a giant shape. This is called the silhouette and there's not much to see there, huh? So add a gap. It can be any gap in the silhouette. Listen, it's not a literal triangle, okay? But it's usually a triangle. Hence, it's called the magic triangle. So the reason why we're putting these gaps is to avoid tangents. You see, when two lines overlap like this, it can make your art look less 3D. So like avoid tangents as much as possible. You can see that here when I'm drawing a bunch of shapes together and they're literally so close to each other it's as if they're kissing each other they're making out, you know? Now you don't want that because that is boring. What you want is for one of them to be in front of the other so that there's like some sort of depth going on. Now going back to the magic triangle, let's say you want to draw a smegsy guy just standing. Now you don't want him to just stand like that. This is giving me very much yes sir I'll bring her back by 7 p.m. vibes. Now this, I'm making it more dynamic, more pizzazz, but also I also added a magic triangle. Do you see it? Where is it? It's right there between the arms and the waist. Now this is giving me your daughter calls me daddy too vibes and that's how you do it. Okay, so the next tip, although this is already very common, is to add curves to your poses. No, I am not talking about making them thick, although you could do that. I am talking about the gesture that poses have. A way to make your poses more dynamic and interesting is to add curves. The most interesting poses usually have like S curves, so you've got this pose and it's a pretty interesting pose. However, we can make that so much hotter. Also. We could try switching up the perspective. I'm using the 3D models in Clip Studio Paint, which you can download in the description. Anyway, this is basically a cheat, if you will, that allows you to change the perspective of the character. This is gonna make your pose so much more interesting. Alright, so for the next step, we are going back 
to basics. So we all know this guideline, right? This is the basic guideline that we use to draw faces. I mean, even I still do this. We've got the circle and the cross thing and then the chin. But the next time you draw these, do this. So every time you draw a face facing anywhere except the front, just add this little line here, okay? So if you've noticed, the skull is actually like a little bit flat in the sides. So it's pretty much longer. So adding this line right here, this is going to help you draw the head correctly. So do this line thing the next time you draw heads. All right, so for our next tip, draw teardrops as the limbs. Now, a lot of beginners just use two parallel lines like this to draw arms or legs. And that is absolutely wrong, okay? Our limbs have muscles in them. And honestly, I didn't study anatomy, so I have literally no idea how muscles look like. However, drawing them as teardrops will help. For example, if you're gonna draw the arm, just use a big fat teardrop for the shoulder thing, and then another teardrop for the upper arm, and then another teardrop for the lower arm. Very brilliant technique, is it not? Okay, so this is somewhat related to my other tip in this video. However, I feel that this deserves its own special mention. So remember when I said that you shouldn't draw tangents? Well, this is a very common mistake by beginners. Lots of beginners, when they're drawing a head in the three-fourth angle, they kind of tend to make the eyes like this, right? So when you're drawing eyes in this angle, draw them instead like this. So this shouldn't be facing the other way, but instead it curves like this. And not only that, it shouldn't touch the head. Because like when you draw the eyes so close to the head like that, it creates a tangent, which if you remember is bad because it looks like they're kissing. Try to avoid drawing your eyes too close to the tip of the head and that's all. Next tip. Our next tip is the Pinterest browser extension. Now listen, I don't use this bad boy often, but I promise you it's gonna save your butt when you need it the most. It's like the opposite of Avatar because like when you needed him the most, he vanished. Get it? Okay, I'll stop. Anyway, so you can literally save any image on Pinterest and obviously that's already an absolute win. But also think of the things that you could do with that. If you ever see cool art on Twitter that you like, you can save it on Pinterest and then click this little magnifying icon right here. It's going to show art that looks similar, okay? That way, you can have tons of inspiration. The same aesthetic, stuff like that. Just make sure you credit the artist though, obviously. So for our last tip, use thumbnails. So what are thumbnails? No, it's not the YouTube video thumbnail. A thumbnail is basically a very small version of your drawing that you make before you even do your drawing. This is a must if you're just starting out with your drawing because it does two things. It helps you visualize your art and obviously it saves your time. Because the thumbnail is really small, you don't really have to spend a lot of time on it. Just put the overall vibe that you want your drawing to have. You could even add color is not there. Don't think about the technicalities, okay? Because you know what guys, at the end of the day, it's not about what looks right, it's about what looks good. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and give it a like. Click on this video next and I'll see you there.